Namaste. I'm Red Feather Free. Thank you for tuning in. This is going to be the first part, the introductory to a series I'm going to call Chasing the Dragon. The introductory opening segment is going to be focused on Tiamat, the Babylonian goddess. We have to start somewhere, and as far as written history goes for humanity, the Babylonians have it hands down, bar none, the oldest. So we'll begin chasing the dragon in ancient Babylon. We're first taken to the Wikipedia page for Tiamat just as a general beginning um, point. In the Mesopotamian religion, Tiamat is a chaos monster, a primordial goddess of the ocean who mated with Absu, the god of the fresh water, to produce younger gods. It is suggested that there are two parts to the Tiamat mythos. The first is which Tiamat is creatrix through the, a sacred marriage between salt and fresh water, peacefully creating the cosmos through successive generations. In the second, Chaos Kampf, Tiamat is considered the monstrous embodiment of primordial chaos. Although there are no early precedents for it, some sources identify her with images of a sea serpent or dragon. C. Um, Jacobson Thorkild, The Battle Between Marduk and Tiamat, Journal of the American Oriental Society, page 88. In the Babylonian Epic of Creation, she, is given birth, she gives birth to the first generation of deities. Her husband, Apsu, later makes war upon them and is killed. When she, too, wars upon her husband's murderer, she is then slain by Ea's son, the storm god Marduk. The heavens and the earth are formed from her divided body. Now, interlude, I find a clear parallel between this story and the story in Indian mythology of Kali and Shiva. Shiva is Marduk. Kali is Tiamat. Kali was destroying all the evil demons in the world and she got so carried away that she almost destroyed the entire world until in that mythology Shiva sacrificed himself under her feet and tamed her. Same story is in Egyptian mythology of Hathor who was brought into Egypt um, and tamed and became Hathor when outside Egypt she was the wild goddess Sekhmet, the tigress, the tiger-headed goddess. So Tiamat was later known as Thalate um, in the Hellenistic Babylonian Berosus, first volume of Universal History. It is thought the same name of Tiamat was dropped in secondary translations of the original religious texts because some Akkadian copyists of the Enumuma Elish the substituted the ordinary, the ordinary word for C for Tiamat since the two names had become essentially the same due to association. The linguistic link connection is also made to Tethys he finds uh, Thorkild and Burkhart find the later form Thaloth to be related clearly to the Greek Thalatha or Thalassa C. The Babylonian epic, the Enuma Elish, is named for its inscript When Above. The heavens did not yet exist, nor the earth below. Apsu, the freshwater ocean, was there, the first, the begetter, and Tiamat, the sea, saltwater sea, she who bore them all. They were mixing, mixing their waters. It is thought that the female deities are older than male ones in Mesopotamia, and Tiamat may have begun as part of the cult of Namu, a female principle of watery creative force with equally strong connections to the underworld, which predates the appearance of Ea and Inki. Now this is where I will take us next time on our journey. As we get into it further, I want to unveil to you that it's not just some figurative dragon, that the ancients actually knew and understood what they were talking about by a dragon. It's allegorical, it's symbolical. The heavens and the earth, the serpent crossing the skies, the Milky Way is the, is the serpent crossing the sky, and we're in the spiral galaxy of the Milky Way. A serpent is always represented by the spiral. Furthermore, the dragon is representative of what we call the Mid-Atlantic Ridge today, the spreading center, literally the thing giving birth to the land or the continents that life as we know it exists upon and life began in the seas as we know also so Tiamat also represents in psychology in the Jungian psychology the collective unconscious or the subconscious or what we would call it Zen Buddhism she's the 99.9% .9 the void that the 0.01% ego never allows us to get to she is the original chaos that all come out of she's the first the Hathor in Egyptian mythology is the very first in the entire cosmogony. I believe Tiamat is as well.
thank you for tuning in. Namaste. Peace. Please share this video.